I want to talk to you guys today what I believe is the best message that God has ever deposited into my heart. And I strongly believe that you need to somehow, some shape, some form, take notes. Because you're going to need this later on. I'm telling you that you will. There is no doubt in my mind that you're going to need this message. Throughout your life, because the enemy is always seeking whom he may devour, you're going to need this. Because today, I'm going to let you know that you are, say I am, I am. the creator's, the creator's best, product. best product. Come on, you need to say that like you mean it. You are the creator's, the creator's best, product. best product. You know, we all like our phones, right? Whether they're iPhones, whether they're Androids, whether they're government phones, a phone is a phone. You know, to some like me, I want to get the latest one. I'm always looking to update. There's people, even one of my apostles, he calls me a geek because I'm always looking for what's next. I'm always shopping. Uh, is it geek? What does he say? Gadget man. I'm a gadget man. Because I'm always looking for gadgets. And when the new iPhone came out, me and Pastor Karina, we were like, yes. So, of course, me, I went and got the biggest one. Eventually, they'll come out with a cell phone this big. But, and I'll have it. I just, I like it. Some people, like, I, we were talking to some guy yesterday, and he seen me on my phone, and he's happy with his flip phone. He said, I just, I can text, and I can call, and every so often I get on the internet and I'm like, I couldn't do that. Because I believe in updating. If you don't update, you get stagnant, right? If you guys don't update your phones, they won't work properly, will they? Right, right. And you're trying to figure it out and we, you know, we're all always trying to help Pastora because she doesn't update anything. So we help her to update her phone so that she can Keep being the Pavarazzi of the Impact Center. She loves to take pictures. So we help her. But now I want to put that on you. Because I want you to understand that you are God's best product. And for some reason, in Jesus' name, my message. Oh, there it is. Glory to God. I was going to say, you better be the best product. We're going to have some issues. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Internet on my iPhone is not working. I mean, on my phone. Where's my phone? Praise the Lord. On my iPad. This looks like a phone. At least in my hands, it could be a phone. Maybe not in some of y'all's, but in mine it is. So, can I preach from my phone today? Yes. Okay, y'all tell me now I still would. But I appreciate that y'all backed me up. Whoa. This is what happens when you get to this age. There's <laughs> Mac. Security. Okay. Here's what I want you to see. You need to understand that you are full of God's purpose. See, I can tell only one person got that. I'm letting you know today, you're being served, that you are full of God's purpose. And I know you can't see that. I know some of you are struggling with understanding that you are full of the purpose of God. I'm going to give you six questions that everybody here today, and even watching on Facebook Live, watching this later on YouTube, we all have these questions at one point in time in our life. Number one, who am I? Who am I? Number two, where am I from? 
That's why all of a sudden they've come out with uh, Ancestors.com. I don't think they can really prove who you are. I'm just saying, I don't think so because we're all mixed up. That's right. Literally, that's why they invented the ketchup, Heinz 57. <laughs> it's to show who we are. We're all mixed. Some of you, I guarantee you, you may perceive that you're white, but you probably have Native American blood. Some of you may perceive that you're African American, but you have some blood from Israel. It just, it is what it is. But what we need, well, I'm not going to go there. Like I said, some of you have asked, where are you from? Some of you have asked, why am I here? What can I do? That's number four. What can I do? Number five, where am I going? And number six, why me? Why me? Have y'all ever asked yourself, if not all of those six questions, at least one? Yes. <laughs> I know I have. I've asked myself all of those questions. And let me say this to you. Everybody asks themselves that question. Those six questions. The richest guy in the world has asked himself that question. The guy that's living under a overpass has asked himself that question. The pastor of the biggest church has asked himself that question. The mother has asked herself that question. We have all, at one point in time, asked ourselves that question, those questions. And I want to tell you this. One thing that God considers to be a defilement of the land is this that you don't fulfill the purpose he has given you to fulfill that defiles the land because he placed a purpose on the inside of you and i know some of you may have been looking at this coffin and you might be thinking oh he did that because of halloween devil is a liar what I wanted to do, it didn't come up high enough, but I want to write right here, and I didn't have my big graffiti marker, so I'm just going to write it like this. Purpose. Because if you go to a grave site, there's many of these that there's a purpose inside that was never fulfilled. And the Lord is wanting you today, you don't have a right to get to this place without fulfilling the purpose He placed in you. You're defiling the land. You're telling God that He's not smart enough for you, because he put a purpose in you, but you chose not to do it. Let me say this to you. Pastor Karina was talking about healing. Did y'all hear that yes. during worship? Yes. Most of you want to be healed for yourself. Because you want to feel better. Amen? Amen. Come on, let me hear y'all. Yes or no? Yes. But the reality is... That because God's purpose is on the inside of you, you should want to be healed for His name's sake. For Him. Not for yourself. Not because you want to feel good, but because His purpose is on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. So I like this picture that I got. Not that I'm killing Apple. Don't get it twisted, because that's not what I'm doing. But I wanted to show you that apple, you see the little nice cute apple there? That's their what? 
their logo, their trademark. Okay? When you buy, and when I bought this iPad, it made the hardest boxes to open. Amen. <laughs> I only got an amen out of somebody. It comes with a manual. Right? Yes. Most of them. Now they tell you, I want to try to find an original one, and this is what they said. Well, you can go online and download it. This is what I got. It's the Bible for that Mac or that iPad. Okay? You grab this in. It breaks down everything that I need to know about this. How to use it. How to use the apps that are on it. How to add apps. How to delete apps. How to, how to do everything to get what has been purposed to do. Let me tell you what manual means. The mind of the creator. That's what manual represents. It's the mind of the one who created this iPad. Y'all going? Y'all following me? Yes. I should have got somebody excited. Y'all should have been able to pick up on that. But let me take you a little bit further. When you understand that in this is the mind of the person or people that created this, would you not want to read it? But let's be honest. Don't lie. How many of y'all have opened it up and read the manual? Good. Because I didn't either. But in the manual, it tells you everything. It tells you the do's and don'ts when you buy this iPad. It gives you a bunch of laws. Right? Don't operate around water. Don't operate around heat. Don't do this. Don't do that. And I know some of you, that's why I don't read it, because there's so much don'ts. But then it even tells you, don't try to fix it yourself. Mm. Because when you do all those things that it's told you don't do, it messes with the what? Warranty. When you first open it, you have a guarantee. Guarantee that when you open that box, that iPad is going to come on. The warranty on it is if you follow the manual, the mind of the creator, it will work. And if it don't work, hey, you send it to me. I'll fix it. If I can't fix it, I'll send you one brand new. Ship it to you at no cost. You think they're doing that because of you? They're doing it because there's a purpose behind that apple. It's because it has their name stamped on it. It represents them. And if it don't work and they don't do what they're supposed to do, it does what to their name? So it ruins their what? Reputation. Reputation. Boy, I'm glad y'all smart. I got something for y'all. Ooh, somebody done woke up. See, we have to understand that the creator has a reputation. <laughs> Let me tell you how in the Bible you find reputation. Because I know some of you are going to say, that's not his name. You're going to go to Google God. It's God's name, reputation. Let me tell you, Google's not going to find it. But let me tell you where it's at. Everywhere you read where it says, for his name's sake. Well, y'all didn't get that. Ooh, I got excited when I seen that. I was like, what? What? For his name's sake. For his reputation, he's put a purpose on the inside of you. So because he's put his name and purpose on the inside of you, he's got to stick to it. He's got to honor it. You see why I say 
You want to get healed for your name's sake instead of for his name's sake. It's his reputation that's on the line. <laughs> Woohoo! I told you I was excited about this one. So I know y'all thinking, because I know how y'all theologians think. Well, show me that in the Bible. Okay. If you have your Bible or your iPhones or your regular phones, your non-smartphones, go ahead and go to Psalms 23, verse 3. It says, He refreshes and restores my soul, my life. He leads in the path of righteousness for His sake. For His reputation. He's doing this, leading you in His direction for His name's sake. He's letting you know, Savion, you need to follow what I'm telling you because I'm leading you in a path and it's not for your name's sake, but it's because my reputation has been purposed on the inside of you. Thank you, Amen. We don't get that. We think, oh, well, I want to be healed so I don't struggle with diabetes anymore. No, it's because God put his reputation on the line. Right. Jesus came because God's reputation was on the line. God said in the very beginning, I'm going to create man in my image. Amen. And Jesus said, wait a minute, because they were in the meeting. We may have saved, they were in a powwow. I'm sure they had a drum. But they, had a, they were gathered there, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And God said, look guys, I want to create man in my image. And Jesus said, oh man, Dad. Really? And he said, Dad, what are we going to do? If man chooses not to follow you, what are we going to do? He said, well, we're going to have to redeem them. And Jesus said, I'll be the redeemer. For your name's sake, daddy. You didn't get that, Pastor Tina. Some of them are half bald because it went by so fast. Jesus had to do it for God's name's sake. He had to make a way to redeem God's creation back to himself because he created them because he wanted a relationship. Amen. Let me show you in another scripture. Psalms 25, verse 11. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my wickedness and my guilt, for they are great. This was David. So, when we understand, Donnie, that God led you to the Lord and removed the wickedness that was in your life, it wasn't just for you, but it was for His namesake. Because He's on the inside of you and He has a purpose for you to do. You're not just a oops that just happened. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all young people, y'all better hold on. Because I know y'all want to. I'm going to wait to give you that. I'm going to give you another scripture. Because I know how y'all young people act. I used to do it too. In Psalms 31, verse 3, it says this. Yes, you are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. See, God's not fortress just for you. It's because it's His name that's on the line. It's His reputation that's on the line. If God doesn't lead your steps, if He doesn't guide you, if He doesn't protect you, if He causes you to fall, it's His name that's on the line. Let me tell you something. When I found this out, I was like, oh God, you're in trouble. Because it's his reputation. So, when I quote now, Matthew 6, 33, I tell him, 
Yo! And I know some of y'all better not talk to God like that. You allow me to get strike down. But I do. I'm like, yo, Pops, check this out. You said if I put you first. You said that. I didn't say it. For your name's sake, you said if I put you first. And then you said, if I do it your way, you will add everything else. It's for his name's sake he's going to add everything else because he put the first two part of that verse. In his name, I mean, if I seek him and I do it his way, everything that gets added to me, it's not for me. It's for his name's sake. Because his reputation is on the line because he said, I got to seek him first. Amen. I got to do it his way. See, God's doing things for us, but it's for his reputation. We just get to reap the benefits of it. Amen. Oh, some of y'all didn't get that. I, I mean, I, I thank God. Because let me tell you something. There is 7.1 billion people on the earth today. There's a purpose why they're here. There's a purpose. You might think, well, no, I don't have a purpose. I, I don't know why I'm here. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I'm from. I, I don't know. It's always you don't know. Let me explain something to you. I told you, y'all youth, y'all youth, y'all ready? Raise your hands if you're ready. Y'all ready for these? Come on, let me see. I got older people raising their hands. They're ready. They want to hear this. Let me tell you something. When mom and dad were in the back car getting it on, I told y'all, you got a dozen. Honey, did you tell him? When they were in a room getting it on, when they were in a hotel getting it on, whether it was in the backyard getting it on, guess who was watching? God! <laughs> and all of a sudden, God said, oh, they're really doing it now. They're not even saved. They're fornicating. But you know what? All of a sudden, uh, it's going to get graphic. All of a sudden, 500 million sperm cells came out. And they're all running. <laughs> I'm getting to that egg. I'm getting to that egg. I'm going to be first. I'm going to be first. And God's going, nope, nope, nope. 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 And all of a sudden, guess what egg made it? Guess what sperm cell made it to that egg? Say me! You! So you can't tell me that you're not important to God. That you're born out of a mistake. That you're an oops. I know you might think, well, you don't understand. I'm born out of a rape. It doesn't matter. God has a purpose for your life. Yeah. I know that's hard to fathom, guys. I know it's hard. Well, you don't understand. You're not the one being raped. I understand that. But there was 500 million sperm cells. And you came out. God intended you to be born. He didn't mean for you to come out of a rape. He didn't mean for you to come out of something that was negative. But he meant for you to be on this earth. For such a time as this is why you're born. And there's a purpose. And his reputation is on the line. Because you're born. And you're walking this earth today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go to your Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. I don't understand why people can't get excited about something like that. I always thought, why did my mom and dad have me? Why did I go through the hell that I've gone through? Why did I go through the abuse 
through the rejection. Why? Why didn't I have it all made? Why was I born into a rich family? Why did my parents not get married? I'm a bastard son. Why, God? It's for such a time as this. Yeah. And I get excited to know that I have a purpose. Yes. Yes. You want to know why I'm secure? Why I'm bold? Why I walk in this authority? Why I talk the way I talk? Because I understand God's reputation is on the line. You want to know why I talk about sex and drugs and all that here? Because God's reputation is on the line. And God will not compromise his word. Not for you and not for me. It's not my fault. And I'm going to put this out there. And pastors, if you want to call me, 580-458-1536. It ain't my fault that you don't preach the truth. That you rather have full seats and rub people's back instead of telling them the truth. That if you live a lifestyle that doesn't line up with the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're going straight to hell. I'm going to preach the truth even if they kill me doing it. I'll be in good hands. I'll be just like my master, Jesus Christ. Preaching the truth. Not concerned with the religious people. Come on. Come on. I'm going to let you know that you have a purpose. That you have a right to be on this earth. Amen. And God wants to use you. Because his name is on the line. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says this. God chose us to be in a relationship with him. Even before he laid out the plans of this world. He wanted us to live holy lives. Characterized by love, free from sin, and blameless before Him. That right there, young people, you better listen to me. I'm talking to you like you're gay. You better listen to me that there's a purpose in your life. That's what that scripture tells you. Before God ever did anything on this world, created this earth, you was on His mind. He was thinking about you, Jose. He was processing. What am I going to put into this son of mine? How can I use him to change this world? I want him to impact lives. My mind is on you, son. See, God was thinking about you. Tanya, he's been thinking about you. He's been processing your purpose, girl. You better get with it. You got to answer to God, all you guys. If you're not doing your purpose... You never know when those eastern skies are going to part and Jesus shows up on the sea and you're not knowing what to do. you got a purpose. And His name is on the line. It's His name's sake. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. As you turn there, when you get there, say Amen. Don't get there too fast. I got to get a drink. <laughs> I'm glad I only heard two people say amen. <laughs> Gave me time to drink some more. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 29. All right, I got the last one I needed. Said, for he knew all about us before we were born. He destined us. Listen, I love this. He marked us with his seal. He's marked all of us. He's marked you. You have a godly mark on you. That he put, just like, oh, where's it at, Sam? Right there, you got it. <laughs> just like Apple put a mark on this that represents what it is. If you take my phone cover off, it has an Apple on there. If you, my iPad, my, all, all my stuff. 
Apple branded, <laughs> branded its mark on everything. So you can't try to say it's not an apple. So when you give your life to the Lord, you can't deny that you're a believer. Amen. Because there's a mark on you. You've been branded, you've been tattooed by God to show people that you're His. And even the devil, you know, there's something, because I watch a lot of cop shows, it's, uh, and there's something about when there's blood splattered and they clean it up, they get this light out. They spray this thing and they get this blue light out and guess what it shows? The blood that was there. So guess what the devil, same way, you can't see it. But he has to wear those glasses. And he sees the blood of Jesus on each and every one of you. Yeah. Remember, back in the day, they had to put it on the doorpost. Yeah. But now Jesus said, ah, whoa, daddy, I told you. I'm redeeming them for your reputation. So I'm marking them with my blood. So when the devil looks with his infrared. Oh, I can't touch that one. Oh, oh! I can't touch that one. But you know how he does see you? It's whenever you're not living the right way. Okay. All of a sudden, he sees. There's not enough blood of Jesus there. I can get in. He finds a leaky pocket. So he's able to get access and attack you. See, he wants to attack you. Because the last thing he wants, listen to me, the last thing the devil wants is for you to honor God's reputation. Because he couldn't do it. <laughs> Man, I love this message. I think I'm fixing to get saved. I'm going to lay hands on myself, Sam. From the beginning to share his likeness of his son. This means the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. See, that shows you you're in the process of being just like Jesus. But there should be some progress in your process. Because if you're not progressing in your process, you're no different than pond water. And pond water don't move. It gets stagnant. It becomes uh, to a place of smell. What fragrance are people smelling on you? Mm. I'm going to tell you, all that Chanel you got on, it ain't helping. You should be smelling kingdom fragrance. It should be a sweet-smelling smell, fragrance into your nostrils when you walk around a son and a daughter of God who's living after God's reputation. I know that's above some of y'all's heads, but it's okay. You'll land eventually. We have to understand that God put Himself on the inside of you. Young people... Don't let anybody tell you you are insignificant. That's why I told you to write down these scriptures because you're going to need them. You may need them when you walk into your house today after leaving church. Your parents may tell you you're unworthy. You're like, don't tell them. Don't dishonor them. Okay? But inside yourself, Satan, Mom, I love you, but you missed it. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the manual. Listen, that's not what the manual said. Uh, yeah, come on, y'all got to get that. Do I need to go back? The Creator's mind said, my reputation is on the inside of me, Mama. Mama, you, you, you got, Mama, I'm going to pray. Don't, again, don't tell her this. Just pray. Pray in the Spirit, because He's liable to lay hands on you. 
And then you get mad at me. Well, Pastor Ray said, I'm telling you, pray in the spirit. Okay? Pray for your mama. Pray for your daddy. Pray for your uncles, your aunts, those that talk about you. Those that get on Facebook and decide to say, you're trash. You're not worthy. You're ugly. You're an ugly duckling. You're this. You're that. Go to the manual and say, uh-uh. God said, I'm created in His image. So I'm not what they tell me. I'm what He tells me. You got to get the Creator's manual. And let me tell you, you struggle because you don't open the manual. Because you don't read it. You go straight to the phone. I'll figure this out. <laughs> Young people, you can't figure it out. Old people, you can't figure it out either. That's right. That's right. So go to the manual. Go to the Word of God. Seek His face. Seek Him while He can still be found. And don't go to your grave with your purpose. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 30 says, Having determined, listen, having determined our destiny ahead of time, He called us to Himself and transferred His perfect righteousness to everyone He called. Let me tell you all this. You are all called. Amen. Say, I am, I am called, by God. called by God. So see, God knows you just said it. Yes. That you understand you are called by God. And watch what he says. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. So you need to operate from a glorified perspective. Because it's for his name's sake that he did this. And I'm going to throw this real quick. I looked at Noe. And just looking at Noe reminded me. If you got to go, you're released. God bless you. See you when you come back. But I'm going to keep going. Can I keep going? Yes. You have to understand that God is on the inside. I say this for the last almost five years. The deity of God lives on the inside of everybody. When a call to salvation comes, it's not because of the man, but it's because the Holy Ghost is drawing you. He's pulling on the essence of God that's on the inside of you. And all of a sudden, you're feeling this tug. You're like, man, what I just heard. Man, I need this God. I need this power in my life. I need this. And some of y'all say, I don't want to go to hell. Because hell is real. Hell is fire. Yes, it is. It's hell, fire, and brimstone. That's right. There's a lake of fire. You're going to experience every disease every sickness you're going to be term tormented for the rest of your life for eternity and all of a sudden people I want to get saved I want to experience that okay I scared the hell out of you great now I want to disciple you I want to grow you I want to develop you because it's God's reputation is on the line you wonder why I'm so hard because God's name is on the line. And I'm not going to be held accountable because you don't want to fulfill your purpose. I don't want God to tell me, I told you to tell him this and you didn't tell him. So I'm going to tell you. Whether you like it or not, whether you come back or not, you're going to know if I go to the impact center, they're going to tell me the truth. They're going to speak the truth. That's right. They're going to tell me that if I'm living out of wedlock with somebody, it's sin. That's right. And it's real. If I'm sleeping around on my wife, on my husband, it's called adultery. And it's real. If I'm living a homosexual life, you won't inherit 
the kingdom of God. It's real. I'm going to preach the truth. Because I refuse to stand before God and God tell me, depart from me. For you didn't do what I told you to do. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it to my last breath. I'm going to preach the truth. And I want you to know that the purpose of God is living inside of you. The Creator put Himself on the inside of you. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. It says this, Before I even formed you in your mama's womb. That's why, that's proof that God was watching your mama doing something. Whether it was with a husband, whether it was with a lover, whether it was a rape, it didn't matter. God knew you in your mother's womb. Before that seed ever got to that egg, God already knew. And he says, I know I knew all about you. Let me tell you something. God knows the end from the beginning. He knew where you were going to end up before you were ever born. But he sent Jesus so that you wouldn't end up in hell. Because that's where we all deserve to go. Because we've all have fallen short of the glory of God. But there's a redeemer that in a meeting before God created the world, he said, wait, dad, I'll die for them. I'll pay that sacrifice. I'll die for you, Gabriel Cooper. I'll die for you, Gabriel Burgess, Josue, Pastor Jim, Pops. I'll die for you. I'll do it. I will die for them, Dad, because I want your reputation to stand strong. Amen. I want your reputation to be solid. And he said this, before you drew your first breath, I had already chosen you to be my prophet, to speak my word to the nations. So don't ever tell me that you can't do something for God. Because God has already chosen you to speak his word to the nations. And I know you may be thinking, so you mean I got to go to Africa? No. You mean I got to go to Japan? No. They're right here in Lawton, Oklahoma. You can speak to the nations right here. If you look across this room and around this entire room, there's nations that are represented here. You have a right to speak the word of God to the nations. Well, I'm not a prophet. The Bible says that we should all prophesy. You might not be in the office of a prophet, but you prophesy his word. Speak his word. It's living. It's the living, uncompromised word of God. Amen. Speak it. Speak. Hallelujah. Yes. Now I'm going to end with this scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. It says the eternal. Who's the eternal? The eternal creator. God. He knows the plans He has for you. He knows it. He's got a book written on you. That's how important you are. He's got a whole entire book written on each and every one of your lives. It has your name written on it. He wrote it out. He took time. And I know, try to, I know it's hard for you to process. But see, we got to understand you can't process God's time. His time is beyond what we can fathom, what we can think of, what we can comprehend. But God took time to write every one of our books before He ever created us, before your mom and dad or whoever brought you into this world. He already wrote it out. And here's what he says, that their plans for peace 
and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. And here's what he says. Never forget that. Never forget that. That he has written your book. He's wrote your plans out. If you want to know what your future is, you know, people ask you, hey, so what are you going to do when you graduate? I'm, I'm looking at my book. And they're going to look at what book? The book that God's written about me. I said this, I think, last week or whenever. Somebody shot me a text and said, Ray, I need to ask you a question. What are you going to do? What would you do if you had a billion dollars? I know y'all thinking right now what you would do with a billion dollars. You know what I said? Matthew 6, 33. Because I know who gave me the million dollars. I know who purposed for me to have a billion dollars in my account. It wasn't my beautiful wife and all these money. It wasn't the people of the church that gave me a billion dollars. It was my God. My daddy wrote it in my book that I would have a billion dollars. So who do I need to ask? Is my dad, what do you want me to do with a billion dollars? That's what we need to do. Whether it's a dollar or whether it's a billion dollars. It's always seek the one that created you. The one that's got a manual written on your life. The one that put a purpose on the inside of you.